So my father is the founding father of Hillcroft, and of course, Hillcroft has now become the Mahatma Gandhi district. That's what it was proclaimed in the early 2000s. Coming from India, investing whatever money, very little money that they had, it's amazing, to be honest. Uh, I, there's really not any words to kind of describe the kind of work and dedication that they had to put in building this business from the ground up. When a person walks onto Hillcroft, they come to Hillcroft knowing that the experience that they're gonna get is unlike anything they're gonna get anywhere else. You come to Hillcroft because you're looking for something that's different different jewelry, different food, different clothing. You can come to Hillcroft and you can get your sweets, you can get your groceries from India, you can get your clothing, you can get jewelry. You don't need to go to India anymore for weddings. We are a one-stop shop on Hillcroft. You can find anything you can find in India, you can find on Hillcroft. We went from three main Indian businesses to about 60 to 70 Indian businesses in this community. So my parents came here with an American dream in the early 80s and they realized that there wasn't a sweet shop where everybody could gather and get sweets for their family for special holidays and events. So they decided to open something here for our local community. Raja Sweets is known for our sweets and food. We are a local fast food restaurant, but we also have an established bakery. That's what we're known for. We handcraft each sweet individually and we have different flavors, carrot, pistachio, almond, all different flavors that you can think about. We have a small place when we open. It's only 20, 30 seat, now it's a 70, 80 seat. We found this, which was very centrally located uh, for, uh, you know, in Houston. At that particular time, the oil business was uh, booming. It was the oil industry was booming. There were a lot of engineers coming into Houston, you know, from India, Pakistan. China and all the Orient, everybody was coming in. So I figured, you know, this would be a perfect location for an Indian-oriented uh, business. We used to come here, my parents used to bring me here in the mornings. We didn't leave here till maybe 10, 10, 11 o'clock, and we closed at 8 o'clock. You know, um, it, that amount of hours that was put in, you know, to build this business. I saw the value in this in this type of business, and like, there's just so much to learn, for, especially for my dad. We carry uh, uh, saris, and we import fabrics. We got laces, we got silks, we've got ready-made silk saris, and uh, uh, Indian outfits. So, mom and dad were part of the first generation of South Asians to come to the U.S. for opportunity and they started Care 22 by going to people's houses originally before we even had a retail location. We got to learn a lot about our own business and see the amount of work our family put into it. Back in 1983, my wife came up with this idea that why don't we do this jewelry business? Nobody was doing in Texas. There was already a sweet shop, there was a sari store and a fast food place. There was no jeweler. So that's how we ended up taking this position in this shopping center. So I was about five years old when this place opened and I used to run around the counter and help my mom kind of work behind the scenes and do little things here and there, mostly play in the kitchen. Kind of grew up with the customers. We've been having some of the same clientele over the last 35 years. So people have seen me grow up from being a little five-year-old to a teenager to a young adult and then, you know, our clients just kind of become family because they've just been coming for so long. It was expected that I would work here since I spent so much time here in the family business. You know, my parents always told me they wanted me to major in business in college and then one day run this place, you know, when it come down to it, when they were ready to retire. So my dad passed away in 2001 of pancreatic cancer and uh, his last wish on his deathbed was that we never close Raja Suites because they, my family's put in so many, um, so much blood work, you know, blood, tears, everything into this place. So I'm gonna try to manage it as best I can. I don't think I can fill his shoes because he, you know, he had some big shoes, but I'm definitely gonna do the best I can. I had a lot of fun because I was very young and I had some friends that were here and nearby friends and sons and daughters of local businesses. And so growing up, I had a lot of fun running around and playing with these sari sticks that have these sari rolls on it. So that was fun. And then as I grew older, I was starting to learn a little bit more about what's going on around me, all the different products and clothes. I think there's a cultural aspect. I started to fall in love with the beauty of the products, like the dresses and different things. And I, I found a new interest in that that I never really had before. So I, I do like seeing um, my dad customizing outfits 
my brother getting like good outfits for brides to be. Seeing what my parents were building and seeing them consistently working hard, I kind of just felt, you know what, no, I need to be here, I need to help, I need to do whatever it is I can to lighten the load on them. At first, I, I, I wanted to take everything that I learned from college and I kind of wanted to apply it and run with it and do it my way and do it this way. But I think it was after the second year where I kind of realized, I was like, you know, I think what we can do is work with each other. Let me slowly implement what I want to implement and, and understand where they're coming from and try to see if, again, we can work towards our one goal. Oh my God, thank God for my kids. You know, they, uh, my, you know, I've got two wonderful kids and you know, they are uh, right now my backbone. Okay, I know that if I am not able to do it, I got two capable kids who are gonna be able to take my legacy forward. So growing up, Anant and I were both, you know, mom and dad didn't have, they couldn't just send us anywhere. So they would bring us to the store. So we grew up in this retail environment, cleaning the counters, displaying the jewelry. It became like second nature to us. And we were kept very busy. On the weekends, we would come to the store. We would help clients from a very young age. There were times where, of course, every weekend we were like, again, the store, you know, our friends got to go to all these places, but mom and dad were so involved in the business that they didn't want to leave us with anyone else or have us loitering around the house. So they were like, we can trust you when you're at the store, we can see you, so you're coming to the store. The dynamic that me, my sister, our parents, Sharon's parents, Cash's parents, all of us growing up here, it was only three of us. We had cows in a pasture across the street. Um, was beautiful back then because it was just a small family, a small community of people and on a weekend basis we just meet all of our friends over here. At one point in time I, I did feel as though we would all come back. Our parents have worked so hard, they've worked, I mean the number of hours they put into what they were doing, raising us, bringing us over here, showing us what they were doing. This is part of our culture and being in a family business, work is part of your dynamic. We're always pulled to what we grew up around. Specifically we are high carrot gold and diamond jewelry. For me, this is passion. I love this business. I can't stay at home without coming into the store. And then I have less of a burden because both of them have shown keen interest and also taking this business to the next level. Uh, we are used to traditional uh, jewelry selling idea, but they have come out with new techniques at, uh, you know, involving more technology and a website and things like that. So obviously we are very happy that they are there to take this business to the next level. It is a lot of work, but I'm willing to put in the work, um, definitely to carry my dad's legacy. It's definitely important because he created, he was one of the founding fathers at Hillcroft, and he created such a big legacy, you know, a place for mainstream America and the local Desi community to come together with food and sweets. Thank you, y'all laid a great foundation. Um, keep teaching the younger generation because there's a lot to learn. You're taking the baton from your parents and you're trying to build and maintain the business, but at the same time build it to a larger scale. What my parents have done, what Anand's parents have done and Russian's parents have done, uh, what Sharon's parents have done, building this business, you know, with nothing in their pockets, you know, taking that leap and where it is today being here after 40 years. We have to acknowledge and respect a lot of the hard work the sacrifice, the time, and the consistency that mom and dad poured into Care 22. For over 40 years, that consistency has allowed us several renovations to grow with the community at the same time in Houston. I think if my father could see us now, he would be so proud at how far we've come. This business has come a really long way. I never thought we would all, you know, I mean, we grew up on Hillcroft. Nobody thought that, wow, one day we'll be running Hillcroft, you know?